Hello, and welcome to a very special video taking a look at Elden Ring in 2024. Now, first I just want to make this clear. I'm sorry that this video might be a little bit different from the rest of my content. I've been gone for quite a while, like a week, uh, because I've gone down with a bad case of the flu. So again, I know it's like traditional at this point. Every YouTuber has to apologize. Apologize to the internet. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm only here to say that I'm so sorry. I'm gonna apologize for a lot of things. This has all taught me a really valuable lesson. I have a lot to work on as a human. God forbid if my voice sounds a little bit different in this video, okay? But if you're new to the channel, it doesn't matter. Welcome back to another great video with the majestic host, the savior. I'm very excited to be talking about this because Elden Ring is going to get a big, big expansion coming 2024 and I think we're all looking forward to it. It's going to add basically a whole new area, probably the size of Limgrave. So welcome undead. Let's go into the cursed zone, into the forgotten lands, and explore Elden Ring in 2024. Torrent has chosen you. Mountain of fire! Bake me in your flames! May chaos take the world! Foul tarnished. Someone must extinguish thy flame. So we don't need a long intro for this, Elden Ring, we all know what this game is at this point, we all know how successful Elden Ring was, and how it basically brought the Souls formula into the mainstream, and some people say that's a problem, I'm kind of on that fence a little bit, but at the same time I'm very happy that so many people now got into the original Souls games because of Elden Ring, and I do think Elden Ring is a fantastic game. Is it perfect? No, of course it's not perfect. But when you compare it to every other AAA release, then this is the king. You know, this is the gold tier, the gold standard of what a game should be like in this new current generation. Make sure that you do watch until the end of the video because I will be sharing some news about Elden Ring and its universe that you might not know about or you might not have thought about before because I absolutely love the philosophical aspects of Miyazaki's worlds and Dark Souls especially. Elden Ring has its own unique, interesting themes about it that you can apply to Dark Souls as well, and I think it's worth drawing attention to those details. But let's just get into this review for people who have perhaps never played Elden Ring or for people who did play it on release and then put it back down, and if they're wondering if it's worth getting back into for 2024, if they are maybe considering getting the DLC, starting a new character, or perhaps you got burnt out and you're not sure if it's worth returning to Elden Ring in 2024. Coming at me with a key fury and a keen insight and a keen instinct. Got me, you cheating pig! So the only thing I ask before we get straight into this topic is if you are new, which is likely, do consider subscribing. It means absolutely everything to me. I put all that I am into this YouTube channel, this community. If you like gaming content and philosophical videos, I blend both together. So become a wise one and please do support the show by subscribing, checking out my music on Spotify. And if you're kind enough, consider leaving a donation or a thanks because as a smaller channel that's getting so close to 10k, your support just means the world. And I absolutely just, I'm so passionate about this community. Seeing, you know, the comments down below, it always makes my day. And yeah, I encourage any feedback as well. And I just hope to have you join the community. So I won't exactly be giving this Elden Ring 2024 review as if you've never played Elden Ring, because at this point, 
I would assume most people have tried Elden Ring, but I will go over some, you know, details about just this type of game if you haven't jumped into it. But the first thing you need to understand about Elden Ring is, yes, this is of course a difficult game, but in my opinion, it isn't as difficult as the other Souls games, it isn't as difficult as, say, Dark Souls 3 or Dark Souls 2 or Bloodborne or anything like that, because Elden Ring encourages you to explore, to build your character up, you know, it's not a finite focused experience like Dark Souls, and honestly that's why I don't love it as much, but Elden Ring oozes something else that maybe Dark Souls doesn't have as much, Elden Ring oozes style, okay? Everything that you do, the animations, the combat moves, the amount of different, you know, weapon animations and weapon types in this game, Ashes of War, the summons, everything in Elden Ring is about, you know, your build, creating your character. And I think that's why so many people love it. And, you know, it does give you way more flexibility even compared to the original Souls games, and for that I absolutely love it because there's always something new to experience. The world space of Elden Ring is very different compared to something like Dark Souls. It's a lot more high fantasy, it's very open, not just in the design of the gameplay where, like I said, you can customize your character exactly how you want them to be, you can focus exactly on what type of build you want to be, if you want to be a big brute, a big juicy boy that doesn't, you know, dodge around, you can do that. If you want to be a wizard Harry, you can do that as well, although it's a little bit OP. You're old Harry, wizard. I'm a what? Old Harry, and a thumping good and I'd wager, once you trade up a little. No, you've made a mistake, I mean, I can't be a old Harry. What makes Elden Ring feel special is the game world feels alive, you know, the creatures, the dogs around you, everything moves and interacts like, you know, they're living in this world. They don't care about you. You can actually aggro enemies to have little miniature wars for you, and just the design of it, the art style of Elden Ring is of course breathtaking. At times it truly does feel like you're living and exploring a painting, and I think that's what makes this feel so rewarding because every corner every place that you go you know you just don't know what to expect there's always something of value for the player even if it's not going to fit into the build that you made for yourself you can still use these items later on down the road or perhaps just sell them and the experience that you gain along the way they are all fundamental because that's the whole point of this game is to improve yourself, to become stronger. Elden Ring is basically the same standard gameplay loop of the other Souls games, where you're, you know, exploring new locations, finding items to, you know, basically aid you in your progression, and just leveling up, getting stronger, basically resting at bonfires. It's almost a very simplistic gameplay loop, but what makes it so rewarding is because there are so many encounters to overcome, you know, locations that you need to figure out how you can get to this place by unlocking a door or you might need a key item and then of course it's the dungeons it's the bosses that you discover along the way and Elden Ring is great at that because now it's open world you will discover bosses in the open world so now let's quickly touch upon Elden Ring in 2024 what's actually changed okay so on release it was a little bit bad performance wise, it would stutter, the FPS wasn't that great, now you can play it on modern consoles and on PC it's been fixed, it's been patched, so you're not going to have any issues anymore, it's going to run, you know, pretty smooth, pretty buttery I would say, and they haven't really added much to the game because we're waiting this big DLC that is coming, and I think this game will really have a new life because of how much content is actually going to get added, and I really do feel like they listened to the feedback, they understood that some people, like myself, don't like this open space where not much really happens, we like a much more curated experience, 
and I think that the new zone in Elden Ring is going to be far more detailed and far more finite. The only problem with Elden Ring in 2024 is they haven't addressed the core issues, I would say, which is, you know, a better balancing of, you know, bosses and just enemies in general, you know, having some kind of leveling system in which they scale with you because it still has that problem which it did have on release where if you get too overpowered and then come back to an old area, the encounters become pointless because everything is just so easy then. It loses its purpose as a Souls game if it doesn't have any challenge, if it doesn't have resistance to you and they haven't addressed the balancing issues I would say and respecking just isn't as good as I would like, so it makes it a little bit difficult to play around with the massive build, but they have changed how weapons work. They have nerfed some things. Magic isn't as OP as it was. Using blood weapons isn't as OP as it was, so they have changed some things for the better, but also balanced some things a little bit worse. But overall, Elden Ring in 2024 is a much more balanced experience compared to what it was on release and it runs a lot better and then now we're getting all of this new content, all of this new items, weapons, dungeons and I really hope they nail the dungeons this time around and they all feel unique. So now for this Elden Ring review in 2024, let's discuss the negatives, okay? And finally we will end on the philosophical questions that Elden Ring has to offer. So those are all of the things I love about Elden Ring. I just love the game world, I love the exploration, the feeling of discovering something new, overcoming enemies. It's the same gameplay loop that I absolutely love with the Souls games where you're overcoming a challenge, being in this world, fighting through the difficulties and seeing yourself develop and change is of course a very human experience and that's why the Souls games mirror life so perfectly and that's why the gameplay loop feels so rewarding but I don't think it does a good job as something like Dark Souls did where it really does make you feel like you have to push yourself there is no escape there is no alternatives just like there are many times just like in life there are many things that you cannot avoid Elden Ring, sadly, you can avoid a lot of things. So now let's just quickly discuss the negatives. For veterans of the franchise, or people perhaps like me who didn't enjoy Elden Ring as much as Dark Souls, is it worth playing Elden Ring in 2024? Should you play Elden Ring in 2024 now that we're getting a new expansion and now that things might be corrected a little bit more for the older fans of the series? And I have to say, I absolutely do love Elden Ring. Like I said, compared to every other AAA release, it is a masterpiece. But I do feel that it does fall short. It does forget, at times, what made the franchise so amazing to begin with. More than just the game, but an art form. So, like I said, a lot of things have changed with Elden Ring in 2024. But a lot of the things remain the same. For example... There are still so many reused bosses in Elden Ring which take away the creative wonder and the, the wow factor when you discover a boss in something like Dark Souls and I do feel like that hurts the experience. The same thing can be said with the dungeons, there's a lot of reused dungeons in Elden Ring which make the experience feel a little bit copy and pasted. Of course it's not copy and pasted like a Ubisoft game but still the whole point of a From Software experience to me is, you know, the uniqueness and the, the way you discover things and how it all feels so transcendent. But with Elden Ring, a lot of it is avoidable. That's one big problem I still feel Elden Ring has. And that is the fact that you can avoid most things if you don't want to, you know, persist with them. You can avoid some bosses. You can leave an area and still over level yourself and make a, one area that you wanted to explore later and then come back to but now it's pointless because you're over leveled. Um, there's lots of things that kind of break the formula of Dark Souls and the tradition of From Software games and as much as I love the magical world space of Elden Ring it loses the dark fantasy feel of Dark Souls. It loses having 
such detail and attention to the world space. And this comes to the lore, I feel. Dark Souls, everything actually exists for a reason. When you fail in the game and you hollow in the game, it all actually has meaning and it is all interlinked with the gameplay systems. Everything has its own purpose within the universe. Everything in Dark Souls relates to an actual physical world even down to its metaphysics in its philosophical sense. The way the dragons represent the beginning of the universe and fire is represented in Dark Souls, it's just so thematically, you know, amazing. That's what makes Dark Souls truly feel like a transcendent experience, not just a game. Elden Ring feels like it's just trying to go for a little bit more spectacle, a little bit more of, you know, a wide ocean of content instead of so much focusing on the detail so some people might not like that but if you're new to the series Elden Ring is the perfect game to begin with because the difficulty of the Souls games can be notorious some people will not like the gameplay loop but with Elden Ring you can improve you know by going at your own pace and going at your own way you create the destination you create the journey so for that I think it is a good game but I feel like they could have focused more on having more challenges for example torrent makes a lot of challenges feel void uh, lots of areas become pointless like you know you don't have to worry about poison anymore you don't have to worry about poisonous swamps anymore or anything like that because you can just use torrent so I think if they took away torrent it would make this game a lot better and if they made it a little bit smaller um, and a little bit more detailed. But those are my only negatives with Elden Ring. I hope you enjoyed my Elden Ring 2024 review, looking back at what made this game good, what's changed and what is still kind of not so good at the moment in my opinion. Remember this is all my own opinion, you can have your own different perspective of course. Now I just want to tackle a little bit of the philosophical questions that Elden Ring has and what this game has to offer and I will do a deeper dive on this when I talk about Dark Souls because I don't think Elden Ring has as much to offer but I still think it's worth addressing and this might be a reason for you to play it if you're looking for something to make you question, to make you feel truly immersed in a gaming world, Elden Ring is the best game to do that as it stands for this generation because like I said a lot of AAA stuff or quadruple A like with Skull and Bones uh, they don't have anything like that to offer. I do think Elden Ring is about the pursuit of purpose and basically pursuing creative goals and information for yourself. You meet many interesting characters in Elden Ring and a lot of them just kind of go with the flow. Dark Souls was about questioning if these characters are even giving you accurate information and if they actually are looking out for your best interests, most of them are not. In Elden Ring it feels a lot more of a linear storyline in that regard. The themes of the Souls series like finding your own meaning, overcoming you know, difficulties and trying to be the best person that you can be, kind of becoming Nietzsche's ubermensch in a way, finding your own destiny and will seems to lack a little bit more in Elden Ring. Elden Ring seems to be more about legacy, history and almost ego to some degree. A lot of these characters suffer from, you know, big egos and they're holding on to their past. So that is an interesting theme to explore, what that does to, you know, the soul, what it does to the world around you when you're kind of stuck in the past. But I don't think it's as personal or as transcendent as something like Dark Souls. Now, I would say Dark Souls is about understanding the heat death of the universe, understanding that things will eventually, you know, turn to ash. The universe is in a constant state of change and flux, and Dark Souls represents that perfectly with the light and the dark, the fire and the darkness of the abyss, for example. Elden Ring, like I said, it's more about what happens to a culture that is in decay, this land that's become forgotten. It's not so much about the, you know, big question of the universal decay and the transcendent of the will and the soul. So Elden Ring does ask different questions and I think they are worth considering. And I do think that the lore does have something to offer for people who like that more generic fantasy, but it isn't so 
personal. So if you like that type of gaming experience, if you like to still look into a game and find out its lore, it's not told to you, it's still very much vague in that sense, but if you like something a little bit more uh, scripted, if you like something a little bit more generic fantasy, I think Elden Ring is perfect, and I'm not saying that to knock it, it's just very different flavours, and I just think the the theme of motivation that makes everyone so passionate about Dark Souls, why all of us fell in love with the game series to begin with, that's a little bit lost here. It's more so a personal journey uh, of yourself and the world around you. Dark Souls is a lot more about the introspective will and your place as a conscious creature in the universe that is all about change and decay and your sanity. Are you motivated enough to not go hollow? Elden Ring is a much more broader stroke game in which you're tackling, you know, like I said, these complicated egos, these big, you know, mythological characters, kind of destroying old fables and stories and, you know, deconstructing the mythology of these great characters or gods in this universe because you can defeat them. And it's very interesting, but I do feel like it does lack that willpower to always push through, you know, to play against a boss like 20 times over and over again. Elden Ring, you can just go off and explore, and the themes of Elden Ring, the philosophy of Elden Ring represents that. But that is my Elden Ring 2024 review. I do think it's a perfect game to jump into if you like that type of experience. If you like a game that doesn't hold your hand, you're tired of the AAA scene where it just feels like you're playing a movie, it tells you exactly what to do, when to press a button, please give Elden Ring a try. I cannot wait for the Elden Ring DLC and I'm sure a lot of people will be doing Elden Ring DLC reviews. I might do it, I'm not sure yet, but this is going to be a big deal for many of us, but I think this will make Elden Ring even more popular in 2024. So yes, you should play Elden Ring in 2024, and I do hope this updated review and philosophical look at the game helped you decide that. And like I said, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe, stick around, because I will be talking about more Dark Souls in the future and other From Software games and of course covering older games and newer games and all that stuff. So join the channel and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.